Hello everyone, welcome to this course on From Zero to Hero in Trigonometry. So the idea of the course is to start from absolute basics and then go all the way till you are capable of solving advanced level problems. So if you think you are comfortable with the basics of trigonometry, you may play these videos at 2x speed and then go to the next lessons. Or you can also skip some of the lessons if you think you are very comfortable with the uh, basics of trigonometry. So the word trigonometry is actually derived from three Greek words. One is tri, another is ga, another is metron. This means three. This means angle and this means measure. So in fact, trigonometry is the study of relationships between sides and angles of a triangle. Okay, so the earliest uh, known uh, works on trigonometry were recorded in Egypt and Babylon. So the earlier astronom uh, astronomers used to determine the distance of the stars and planets from the earth um, and things like that. So uh, the first astronomical studies were also for the earthly needs, food production, that is agriculture, dependent largely on weather. And a factor determining weather is Earth's revolution around the sun. To determine this correctly, the positions of other planets and stars have to be determined. So this is why astronomy was an important area of study in all ancient agricultural societies. And for that, mathematics, especially geometry and trigonometry, was essential. So in a broader sense, it is the branch of mathematics which deals with the measurement of sides and angles of a triangle and the problems related to angles. What is the simplest triangle you can think of? Yes, of course, it's the equilateral triangle so let us consider an equilateral triangle say whose side is four units you know that the angles are 60 degrees each now if i scale this triangle suppose if i make the sides of this triangle as six units what happens to the angles the angles are still 60 degrees. So you understand one fact irrespective of the actual values of the side lengths the angles of an equilateral triangle are always 60 60 60 right. This you have already realized. Now when you look at the uh, side lengths in one case the side lengths were 4 4 and 4 in the third, second case, it was 6, 6 and 6. Do you realize that we, when we scaled up the triangle, when we, took a very, when we took a similar triangle to the original triangle, the ratio of the sides did not change. Initially, the ratio of the side lengths were 1 is to 1 is to 1 because they were all 4, 4 and 4. Now, in the second case also, the side lengths are 1 is to 1 is to 1. Now, so the summary is, if you take a triangle with all its sides being 60, 60, 60, the ratio of the sides will always be 1 is to 1 is to 1. Now, let us, let us take another simple case, which is obviously an isosceles right-angled triangle. So, in an isosceles right-angled triangle, you know that this is 90 degrees. And since it's isosceles, this is 45 degrees and this is 45 degrees. So suppose I, if we take the side length as 3, this is going to be 3. And the hypotenuse using Pythagoras theorem will be root over 3 square plus 3 square, which is root 18. And that value is going to be 3 root 2. Right. So in this case, if you consider a triangle with sides 45 degrees, 45 degrees and 90 degrees, the ratio of the sides are 3 is to 3 is to 3 root 2, which is 1 is to 1 is to root 2. Now, 
Now let us take another triangle by scaling down the side lengths to 2. So I'm going to consider a triangle, a similar triangle with angles 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and 90 degree. But I'm going to take the side length as 2, 2, and obviously this will be root over 2 square plus 2 square, which will be root over 4 plus 4, which is root over 8 or 2 root 2. So in this case, again, you see that when the angles are 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degrees, the ratio of the sides are 1 is to 1 is to root 2. Now, what do you observe in all these cases? What we observe is that if the angles of a triangle remain the same, the ratio of the side lengths do not vary. In other words, if you consider triangles with the same set of angles, they will be similar triangles, which means their side length, the length of their sides will be different, but the ratios of the sides will remain the same. Or in short, we can conclude that the angles of a triangle determine the ratio of its sides. So in general, suppose I have a triangle. A, B, C with side lengths as uh, small a, small b and small c and suppose I have another triangle uh, P, Q, R. Okay. Suppose this angle is alpha, this angle is also alpha, this angle is beta, this angle is also beta, this angle is gamma, this angle is also gamma. What we have just realized, I mean earlier also we have realized this uh, from similar triangles that we have kept the angles same. That is the set of angles are alpha, beta and gamma and now the ratio A is to B is to C will be same as if I call this P, Q and R, this will be same as P is to Q is to R. And our conclusion was the angles of a triangle determine the ratio of its sides. Now, if you change a triangle without changing the angles, see in this case, if you have con we have considered two different triangles, but the angle we have not changed the angles. So uh, the ratio of the sides will remain the same. Now, unless it's a very, I mean, standard triangle, say like uh, an equilateral triangle or a right angle triangle, it is not very easy to compute the ratio of the sides from the angles. However, mathematicians from very early times have found techniques to compute such ratios for right angle triangle and arrange them in special tables. For example, uh, these tables show that for a right angle triangle uh, um, for which uh, one of the angles is 40 degrees, the side opposite to this angle is approximately 0.6428 times the hypotenuse and the other perpendicular side is approximately 0 0.7660 times the hypotenuse. Uh, that is, say if I have a triangle I have a right angle triangle, this angle is 90 degrees and uh, this angle is 40 degrees, this angle is 40 degrees and uh, now if I say, if I consider a specific uh, uh, right angle triangle in which uh, the hypotenuse is 5 units, then um, this side, say let's call this A, B, C, the side B is going to be 0.6428 times the length of the hypotenuse and side C is going to be 0 0.7660 times the hypotenuse. So the numbers in the table have special names in the example which we just saw the number 0.6428 was the ratio between the side opposite to 
the angle 40 degree and the hypotenuse. So it, if I call this A, this length was, I mean, this ratio was nothing but B by A ratio. And it has some certain name. So this is somehow related to the angle 40 degrees and it is called the sine of angle 40 degree. Right? And it is written as sine 40 degree. Similarly, the number 0 0.7660, which is the ratio between C and A, is called the cosine of angle 40 degree. And it is written as cosine or cos. 40 degrees okay so in the next video uh, we are going to discuss all these uh, ratios which we are going to call as the trigonometric ratios in detail